podcasting from the beautiful state of Maine. Welcome to another episode of the Learning from Leaders podcast, the show that focuses on identifying and developing the skills and behaviors that will inspire, empower, and compel others to follow your lead. Listen as Patrick's guests talk about the powerful leadership approaches they have identified and developed, which are vital for leading in today's challenging times. These are the same approaches that will positively impact you as a leader too. Learning from Leaders provides the right balance of leadership research with real world scenarios, making it easy for you to rise above your best. All right, let's start the show. Hi, everybody. Patrick Verano here. Welcome to another episode of Learning from Leaders. And on this episode, I want to talk about the amygdala and specifically how the amygdala can actually work against us as it relates to building relationships, setting goals, and our own personal health. So let's get into it. As I mentioned, uh, coming into we're still in the first month of 2021. So I thought it'd be interesting to take a little look at this part of our brain called the amygdala and how it impacts our ability to first set goals to some research in regards to how it might play into relationships or biases. And then lastly, how our amygdala or the overactivation of our amygdala as it relates to threat responses can actually impact our health. All things that are important as we come into 2021, I'm sure. So I'll start off with goals. Many people start out the year with the best of intentions of setting goals. The problem is, is that oftentimes this part of our brain, the amygdala, which is a reptilian part of our brain, is all about threats, perceiving threats. And it doesn't know the difference between a real threat and a perceived threat, but it it responds the same way. So when we're setting goals... There may be an opportunity where we've set a lofty goal and our brain is, is sort of looking at this and saying, mm, this, is, this is risky. You know, what, what this person is wants to change careers, wants to start a business, whatever it might be, the brain says, you don't do that. You know, that's too risky. Play it safe. Do what you're doing now. That is that part of our brain that is trying to protect us. And well, oftentimes, if we're not strong enough in terms of the goals we've set, those goals that are specific, emotional, or time-bound, we will talk ourselves out of whatever that goal might be. We'll, we'll dumb it down. We'll do something else. Because, again, it's our brain trying to protect ourselves. And as soon as we change, it's, the brain is probably like, Whew, good thing I helped them through that. We risked, you know, we avoided catastrophe. They were going to start a business, and that would have been terrible for us. So we did our job. Well, next, we can look at from a standpoint of relationships. And there was an interesting article in in the Mind episode of Scientific American. And the title of the article was What Neuroimaging Can Tell Us About Our Own Unconscious Biases. And what was interesting about this article is it talked about how our amygdala actually can create unconscious biases because what it does is it looks for familiarity. And when it senses that it is unfamiliar with something around it, it immediately perceives this potentially as a threat. And this can happen in regards to how we interact with other people, especially people we don't know that we're looking for similarities. That amygdala part of our brain is looking at this individual and saying, is this a threat or not a threat? And especially in the environment that we're in right now, we hear so much around diversity, equity, and inclusion. And I think our amygdala and certainly the research in this article would suggest that, that it plays into our self-protection in a way that creates biases. And the only way that we can prevent that is really to first recognize the power that our amygdala has. Because once we do that, it allows us to slow things down. I'll use this as an opportunity to talk about smoke detectors in our house, because I think there's a, a strong similarity here is that if we can think about a smoke detector in our house and think about food burning on the stove, and as long as there's not a fire, but actually the the food burned, but nothing else is burning, the smoke detector still goes off. 
And what do we do? We just go over and wave something in front of it so that the smoke detector goes off. Maybe we have to unplug it. But I don't think anybody listening would say that they would run out into the street as soon as they heard the smoke detector go off, knowing that it was just burnt food on the stove. You wouldn't do that. But our brains, our amygdala, doesn't know the difference. Every time there is a threat, somebody says something to us that may seem offensive or threatening, or we start to question ourselves on certain things, that amygdala part of our brain is in protection mode, self-preservation mode. And it's trying to do what it can to protect us. It's either going to fight, flight, or it's going to freeze. And it's not until we take a step back and say, this is not a real emergency. This is just burnt food on the stove. I don't need to call the fire department. We're going to be all set. We need to be able to do that in our own minds, is to slow things down, to take a moment to say, is this really a threat? Is this really something that I can't do? Or is it just my my own mind trying to maybe protect me from the risk of failing, but it's not a real threat. I need to be able to, to take a step back and look at this more objectively, to pause. And that's the biggest thing here. And that's why we talk a lot about things around mindfulness and emotional intelligence, developing those areas so that we're able to slow things down and not react as much as we are able to take in everything that's going on and then respond. The last part that I think is really important as it relates to our health is that we know that the more we activate the amygdala, the the fight, flight, or freeze part of our brain, we also activate what's called the HPA axis. And what that does is that releases cortisol in our system. And when we release cortisol in a system, what it does is it takes blood away from many of our um, organs and puts them into our extremities so that we're ready to take action. And it, it draws it out of our brain as well. So if you think we don't make decisions as well when we're under stress or where that fight, flight, or fright is, is activated because we're just like, let's just get out of here. So the other part of that though is, and this was an analogy that I was once told is, imagine that as somebody that was a, a hunter back in the primitive times, that if they were to see a saber-toothed tiger and have an infection at the same time, that what would happen is the, the blood that was in the area that was about, you know, working on immune system and taking care of that bacteria, it left that area and went to our extremities because basically it said, look it, if we don't make it past this tiger, the bacteria, we don't even have to be concerned about because you won't be around <laughs> to recover from it anyway. So let's take care of the thing that's in front of us first. And that's this tiger. And after that, we'll come back and we'll work on our immune system again. Well, if you think about that, and if we think that our system, our immune system or our amygdala works the same way as it does when it was with the saber-toothed tiger, then what's happening is, is that we're overactivating this system all the time. Too much of the time, it's in a fight, flight, or freeze mode by the environment around us. And if we don't control that, then that's less time that it has to build up our own immune system. That's why in the environment that we're in right now, where more and more people are worried about catching a virus, that their own anxiety around catching the virus could actually be working against them in reducing their own or harming their own immune system because they're not allowing it to have the adequate resources that it needs to do its job when it's under a stressful situation. So we can see here where our amygdala and a smoke detector are very similar when it comes to perceiving threats. And it's our job to take a moment and step back and say, this isn't a real emergency, and to recalculate how we're going to respond going forward. And it's not until we do that that we're able to truly make sure that we adequately address our goals, our relationships, and our own personal health. I hope you found this short episode helpful in regards to just thinking about your amygdala in a different way in terms of how it may be working against you. Because once you do that, you'll be in a better position to, as always, rise above your best. Peace. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Learning From Leaders podcast. 
If you've enjoyed the show, please feel free to rate, review, and subscribe on your preferred podcast listening platform. We really appreciate that effort. Until next time, keep rising above your best as a leader.